what is going on everybody welcome back to a brand new video today today we're going to be talking about warhammer 40k space marine 2 the brand new release of a new warhammer game and now officially the most played most popular warhammer game of all time and that is space marine 2 we're going to be talking about is it worth the hype is it really that fun and just give my personal thoughts on the game and if i recommend it to someone like yourself so let's get into it So the game was released on September 9th on all platforms, all next gen, Xbox Series X, S, PlayStation 5, PC obviously, and yeah, the game was developed by Saber Interactive and if that developing team sounds familiar for, to you, that is because they are the creators of World War Z and also the creators of the Swarm engine. So I don't know how much you guys have played of World War Z, if you have, you would understand the concept behind it. And if you've seen any footage from, from Space Marine 2, one of the big things that this development team has created is this swarm engine you'll see millions thousands maybe not millions but thousands tens of thousands of these ai bots come swarming at you and in a way it just kind of works and feels great and they are pretty much the creators of that i don't know any other game that's really been able to replicate that sort of technology at least as we currently stands right now except for saber interactive and as somebody who is a big fan of not only the warhammer series but also the world war z game and what they've provided over the years in that game and the uh, post-launch content. I was super pumped about this game. So this game was announced, Space Marine 2 that is, two years ago. And I would say they've done an amazing job really hyping up this game. There's been a lot of early access footage and other things of people just really getting an idea for this game. And ever since I first laid my eyes on the gameplay footage about a year ago, I was immediately sold. I'm like, I cannot wait to play this game i am super pumped and i felt a lot of people also felt that same way as well even if you weren't a big fan of the warhammer series like myself at the time and then i slowly bring brought myself into the warhammer series through vermintide 2 and dark tide and so on and so forth so i want to start off with talking about the story and the setting of this game so if you're not familiar with warhammer i suggest go checking out a couple youtubers and really have them explain the lore and the setting and what exactly the 40k universe is because i will say myself i am pretty much brand new to the the whole franchise i've only known really about warhammer or at least dove into the story and the lore and the setting of it about a year ago so i don't know too much about it i have general ideas and stuff it's a very complex very huge big world with all kinds of different lines so i always tell people warhammer is more like a world, a setting, than it is an exact story. There's a bunch of stories within it, but it's just detailing these people's lives that are within the 40K universe. So if you are familiar with the Warhammer franchise, this game is set in the 41st millennium during the era Andromedus and the age of the Dark Imperium. The game's main enemies, the main villains that you are fighting in this game are the Tyranids, which are believed to be a split high fleet Leviathan and the forces of chaos. The Tyranids are an extra galactic exectoid race whose sole purpose is to consume all forms of biomatter. So I would say the best way to kind of think of this is, at least when I was playing it, yeah, they're kind of like this insectoid like you get in Helldivers 2, but also kind of like dinosaur-esque. Uh, it is the best way to explain it if you're not very familiar with what the Tyranids are. I will say if you are brand new to this franchise, you might have a hard time understanding the context of the story and everything about it and who these Space Marines are, what is a Space Marine exactly, and who you're fighting for, and who the villains are. Because even someone like myself, I haven't really delved too deep into what the Space Marines exactly are. I understand like they're ranking to the bat one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet, but I, I can only go so far. So. I rely on a lot of other channels out there, so I highly recommend if you're really interested in diving deep into the story and exactly of everything, there's great channels out there that can, can really do that for you. I will say though, the story in general, you can follow it and will be able to understand it. I thought the character development of the main characters were very well portrayed. They did a great job of really showing the emotion, the anger, and really did a good job of wanting you to be on their side. because. I feel like nowadays in today's media consumption world, whether it be movies, video games, books, whatever it might, TV shows, they always want to kind of give, put you in this zone where it's like you want to root for the bad guy, but you also don't want to root for the bad guy. You want to understand them. And we've kind of gotten away from like that just pure bad and pure good. And I felt like this game does a great job of like, we are the good guys. 
these other things are trying to destroy us and wipe out our race we need to stop them and it was pretty refreshing to kind of have something like that which is like you know it kind of brought me back to the childhood a little bit of just like okay yeah we know who the bad guys are i don't have to think about it or go into this emotional limbo it's like we know who these guys are and what they're going through and why they carry so much emotion on their sleeve so now i want to get into some of the gameplay mechanics of the game i played this game on pc but i did say i did find myself wanting to use a controller more i found the game to be a little bit more intuitive with the controls on a controller because on pc the key bindings just seem kind of weird and i know you can customize them to do whatever you want but quite honestly i found myself having the most fun playing this on a controller and i played on an xbox controller but i have a friend who has a playstation controller and apparently the game is dual sense 5 it has all the haptic feedback and everything so i would say if you're playing on pc i would try using a controller i do find the game to be a lot more intuitive in that way as for the core like gameplay elements i will say this game yes some people i've heard some people want to compare it to gears of war but it's not really gears of war because gears of war is more of a cover to cover game i would say this game is a tr it's a true modern take on a hack and slash game that we used to have back in the day it's just you go in there and you just honestly you just mess up anything in front of you 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 are the strongest the baddest person in there and it's just going in there and messing shit up and it's a bloody mess it's 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 just so fun and sometimes it's refreshing to kind of be like that guy you don't have to rank up your character tree or anything like that yes there is some customizations of what you can do in the campaign side where you can get certain armors and certain weapons that you want to start off with but for the most part there's not like this long progression tree you're really just already that dude you just kind of pick and choose what weapon exactly you want to use it is a very linear game so you're going to follow in the campaign since you're going to just kind of follow this straight line path that is set for you which honestly i'm perfectly okay with i've been in playing a lot of open world games lately and there's been a lot of open world games that have been coming out so I will say it's kind of nice to go in there and hop into a game that's just like hey here's the path for you just have fun already put in front of you it's it's truly meant to kind of almost very co-op friendly i would say you're not having to think about what you're doing you're just kind of going in there and just really enjoying the gameplay they really want you to focus on the gameplay so i would say that this game is kind of a mix, I would say Gears of War in the sense of shooting, but a lot of the melee combat reminds me a lot of God of War. So I would kind of mesh those two together and take away the cover to cover aspect of Gears. And you kind of have what you would say Space Marine 2 if you haven't already played the original Space Marine one that came out during the 360 era. As for the graphics and audio, I do want to talk about the art style a little bit. The art style gives you this feeling that you're taking on the entire world. And I do think it does that a lot with the Swarm engine. It gives you that feeling like there is so much coming at you and you are the last line of defense. You have to stop them. And it does a great job of providing that. It's making everything so grand and so huge and seeing these massive alien ships come down at you and dropping a bunch of enemies on top of you. It's really making you feel like, oh man, there is... I gotta stop a lot and then the level of detail that they put into each level is incredible just from the minor minute assets and the backdrops of the buildings and the mountains and the sky ranges and the ships and everything it just looks amazing but that's just the warhammer style you know playing vermintide and playing dark tide while yes different developers it kind of has that same feel of like that grandness of like how big everything is and they do an amazing job portraying that and i feel like if you're a big fan of warhammer for the past 20 30 years this almost kind of feels like your vision coming to life i would imagine for a lot of people now as for the level design i thought the level design was pretty solid the campaign missions are very long i will say this it takes over an hour to complete and i played on a mix of normal to veteran depending if we had a full squad or not if we had a full squad we play on veteran if i was playing by myself i just play on normal and when i started i played on normal but I will say when you start a mission and be prepared to be sitting there for a while because it does take just over an hour to complete. Um, I'm not entirely sure if you can just stop midway through and keep your progress because I haven't necessarily done that because I'm afraid to. But yeah, I would err on the side of caution if you're going to play, make sure you got some time. If you're gonna do the campaign specifically, you know, keep 
keep your time slots available. The boss fights I will say in this game are freaking awesome. They're pretty sick. Each boss is different and unique and adds a different level of variety in uh, combating them. I like that a lot. Outside of the boss level, I outside of the boss fights, I would say the level design in general is pretty standard. Obviously, they did a great job with the art style and the assets surrounding these levels, but just the general design and the structure of these levels, they're pretty straightforward. You're kind of following this path. You're going up, you're going down. Nothing absolutely absurd and crazy that you're doing. It's not like a platformer in any sort of way. So I'm okay with that, you know, considering the type of game that this is. As for the audio, the audio design is incredible in this game. E each gun sounds super punchy. The, the All the insectoids and the Tyranids that you're fighting against and the bosses and the way the melee attacks and combos hit the enemies, it just sounds great. It sounds really good. As for any technical things, I would say for the most part, the game, the game is, I've experienced not a single bug. It has been absolutely smooth. The only thing, my only small complaint I would have from a technical sense is that I do feel like the FPS is kind of low and I've tried on two different systems. I have a PC and a laptop. And while my laptop's a little stronger, I found that it didn't really make a difference in the frames I'm getting. I'm kind of coasting around 45 to 60 frames on two different systems with different settings, no matter what I do. So, and that's what the latest driver update. So I don't know what that's about. I would imagine as time goes on, you know, as games are usually out, they're gonna get optimized better and better and better. But even with that lower frame rate, that 45 to 60 range, it still feels super smooth and super stuttery to the point where I could tell I was at 60, but I would have never noticed that I was dropping down to 40 because something about it, it's just, it's very smooth, even at low frame rates. So maybe people out there beefier PCs, they can get it a little higher, but that would be my only complaint. But even so, like I'm okay with 60 for right now, as long as it's playable, it's not stuttering, it's smooth, I'm okay with it. Now, now that we're done with the campaign, I do wanna talk about the two other modes that are available in this game. The first one being operation mode. So operations is a basically another PVE mode that is supposed to complement the campaign. So what exactly is happening is you're in the campaign and in the beginning of the campaign, you're talking to other space Marines that go off and do another mission as you continue to do your campaign. In operations, you are those other space marines you meet in the campaign doing something else. So a lot of the level art style is going to correspond with what the campaigns are. You're just following a different path and seeing different things and fighting different things but it's all going alongside the campaign. You cannot play the operations mode though until you've completed the campaign or at least completed the second planet in the campaign as what I've found. And there's about six, yeah, there are six operation maps that you can play and they have, and this where makes it a little different from the campaign is now that you have this mode, it's still a three player co-op mode, but there's different classes with different upgrades that you can do and different specialties. So this is where things kind of get, I would say, for lack of a better word, hero shootery, where now you're having your, I believe, six different classes, all with their own certain weapon types and their own special abilities that they offer, and with its own different difficult selectors and its own leveling system. So it's all completely separate, something you can play to continue to scratch that PVE itch once you complete the campaign without having to play it all over again. So, and also get a chance to rank up some characters and play those as well. Now let's get into the multiplayer. The multiplayer, you have three main modes. You have basically a three flag domination mode, ABC, and you try to capture. Then you have the team deathmatch mode, and then you have a king of the hill slash hard point mode where you know you try to stay, get as many points as you can. The first one to a certain amount of points wins the game. It also has the different classes of space marines that you do in operations. It is very similar. The only difference is there's certain things that your character can do in operations that it can't do in multiplayer for a balancing pers because of that, because there's certain things that, you know, maybe you don't want to bring into operations, bring in a multiplayer because you don't want to mess with the balance of it. So, and the multiplayer has its own leveling system as well. And here's what I'll say about the multiplayer. The multiplayer to me is just simple fun. It is super simple fun. It kind of takes me back to playing like these old multiplayer games back in like early 2010s, late 2000s, during the 360 PS3 era, where every game that came out had a multiplayer and the multiplayer was kind of like your standard, you know, like it had your team deathmatch, your dominations or whatever. And it kind of reminds me of that a little bit in a way where 
you know, it's kind of nice to play something just refreshing and simple. You just hop in, select your guy, pick whatever gun you want to use, and then you go in and you just have a fun just sh blasting Space Marines. I will say it's a little spongy, so expect to like, you know, kind of lay into some guys. And I've noticed as I played and as the days goes on, players are getting better and better at how to use their abilities and stuff. So it's starting to get a little bit more competitive, I will say. So yeah, it's and I haven't noticed any skill base because I'm getting put in with a bunch of different levels and different qualities of players. So I haven't necessarily noticed that. I don't know if the game has it or not, but yeah, I will say the multiplayer has been awesome. It's been super fun. The level of design in these multiplayer maps look amazing. They're beautiful. They're very simple, very symmetrical. I would say they're almost all of them are very symmetrical. Not one side is really different from the others. As for the longevity of this game and what the future content is going to look like, there's no words on future content as it currently stands of when I'm recording this video. I tried searching. I didn't really see anything. I would assume that there's going to be I would say this game has a decent amount of content. I'm not going to say it's a ton, it's over, it's a bunch, but I would say for a game like this, it's kind of what I would expect. And I know some people who are super hardcore gamers who put in like 30 hours a week or whatever it is playing game, they might find that they've done everything and completed it really quickly. But, you know, I would say to the casual gamer, and I would say that this game probably fits the casual gamer the most and even hardcore gamers, honestly, just anybody who wants to have good fun. It has a solid amount, and I would imagine as time goes on, based on Saber Interactive's previous experience with World War Z, there's going to be content dropped throughout the time, and just that's the world we live in. So the good thing is it is a $60 game, so you're not seeing a bunch of tiny little micro transactions everywhere, or I would say it's $70 if you're on console, $60 if you're on Steam, at least in the United States. Now, as for the overall reception of the game, it's been great reviews pretty much across the board. Everywhere I look, people are loving it. People are enjoying the game. It's now reached 2 million players across all platforms, which is absolutely insane. It's become the biggest Warhammer game ever. So that's pretty cool to see. And I will say, as for my personal experience with it, it is the best $60 I've spent on a game in a very, very long time. Like genuinely, this has been the most fun game I have played this year. It has been an absolute blast to go in there with friends and just absolutely terrorize everything and just have a good old time. And then when we want to switch things up, go into multiplayer and work together. It, it's been so fun. I've enjoyed every aspect of this game, multiplayer operations campaign. And kind of like what I said earlier, in a weird way, and I was talking to a couple people about it. And from what I was seeing online too, people kind of felt the same way, was that this game gives you an element of nostalgia for me in a weird way even though i've never played the original space marine back in the 360 era it reminds me of that era what i said where it has that simplicity it's not trying to make you overthink it's not trying to have you do all these crazy little weird side quests and trying to make things as complex as possible and add all these different progression trees it's just simple fun and it just brings that element of what we all used to have back in the day and what made games fun. I think nowadays, a lot of games try to overcomplicate things when it really shouldn't be that way. Sure, there's a genre and a niche for that, but not every game has to be that. And I think Space Marine, do, the reason why it's so successful is it's kind of giving something that a lot of players, including myself, has been looking for for a long time. And it's been really, really refreshing to have something like that back. I will say the game has definitely lived up to the hype. It was worth the wait. I've been excited for this game for the past two years since it was announced. And they've released it at a perfect time. It's been super smooth, super great. I will say if you have any remote interest in this game or you've looked into it briefly, but you're not sure, you don't want to spend the money because you've been burned by so many other games, I will say you will not regret this game. I would highly, highly recommend it. It is a blast to play. Yeah, man, check it out especially if you're looking for a good co-op game with friends this is perfect this would be right up your alley i encourage anybody who has played the game to let your thoughts be known down in the comment section below i would gladly appreciate to hear what you guys have to say about it and yeah i want to thank you guys for watching this video and if you're interested in more gaming reviews news discussions whatever it might be feel free to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more and uh, peace out everybody catch you guys in the next one